Well, it finally happened. Scooby was incorporated into the Velma show. Well, kind of. And I think it's safe to say that it was extremely underwhelming and was almost done as a way of paying homage to the character. But what it did instead was showcased how this show can't be saved, whilst shining a light on the very thing that was missing from Velma. So with that, let's break down and explain how this show incorporated Scooby, along with breaking down everything that was wrong with episode 5 and 6 of the show. So let's get into it. Here is how Velma episode 5 and 6 introduced Scooby-Doo. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. So we're now fully within this show. We've passed the halfway point and we're deeply embedded within the multiple cases that we've got unfolding within the show. One thing that this week's episode did was reveal Scooby to us, a moment where we could have had the much-loved Scooby-Doo, but unfortunately, it was a different kind. This moment came to us in episode 6 of the show. Within the episode, we found out about a character called Dr. Edna Perdue, who was revealed to be Norville's grandmother and the principal's mother, tying back into why we saw the card for the insane asylum in last week's episodes. Because she was residing there, we found out that she was studying the practice of being able to keep a brain alive whilst removing it from an individual's head. This was a practice that was picked up by the military as they wanted to stop the protests from meddling kids. This was then when we got our Scooby Incorporation. On a piece of paper on a board, we saw that there was a project that was titled Special Covert Operations Brain Initiative, which then made up the acronym Scooby. This was then followed by the line by Velma where she said, What did Scooby do? It was a moment that felt like the writers had looked for a way of shoehorning in a reference to the character that everybody actually wanted to see in the show, but they weren't able to do. And to be honest, it was cringy. And it also shone a light on the absence that's most definitely felt within the show, due to the character not being there. I imagine we'll probably hear more of what Scooby is and how it ultimately led the principal's mother to end up going insane. With the words, what is Scooby, being written all on the wall, it's definitely planted the seed for it to be developed more, and for the word Scooby to be used throughout the show. It was a cheap reference and just made me think about how the character should be in this show. Let's take a look at what else was included in both episodes. Let's start with episode 5. Episode 5 was a bit of a strange one to be honest, as it didn't really feel like it addressed the main plot of the show at all. This was the person going round and removing brains. It was more of a filler episode. Instead, it focused on Norville with his new girlfriend Gigi, and they've done exactly what I thought they were going to do with him. Turn him into a bit of a laughing stock of a character, because he isn't perceived to be what one would describe as Alpha. Before being with Gigi, he was fine being that type of character, and he didn't take any shame in it. As I mentioned in my previous videos on Velma, Norville has actually been one of the only good things about this show and has provided a sense of realism in the conversations that he had with other characters and was also the only person actually doing detective work. Whereas what they've done to him now is they've made him feel ashamed of being the type of person that he is, making him lose his voice in having Gigi and Velma arguing over him, like he can't speak up for himself. Something that the character wouldn't have done before, so it's a shame that they spent most of episode 5 and 6 making the character adopt that type of role. Within episode 5, it felt like the main story was also centered around Daphne and the finding of her biological parents. We witnessed her go back to the Crystal Mines, where we saw her meet her mother and father, and told her that she had to earn their trust before revealing their true identity. We saw her go back home and research the underground gang that they were a part of, where she saw that she was definitely their child. The story of the killer that was removing people's brains from the town was something that felt extremely absent throughout this episode, considering this was the main case that opened the entirety of the show up and was the main focal point in the first couple of episodes of the show. It was almost non-existent, or a main concern for the residents, which I thought was quite surprising. Velma spent most of her time trying to shake off Fred and battling for Norville's attention, which I thought was a bit out of character for her. She didn't care about Norville right up until this episode, nor did it feel like she actually valued his presence, so the reality of him not being there was something that surprised me. This episode, whilst it didn't try to hammer jokes away like the previous ones, what they did try to do was alter the character's personality slightly in order to make it funny throughout the entire runtime. Fred with his extreme feminism, and Velma brushing off Daphne despite being besotted with her before. It just didn't make any sense, and this episode really did feel like a bit of a filler, because although there were small, subtle hints to the progression of the identity of who the killer could be or where Velma's mother could be, 
it was only really revealed to us towards the end. Velma and Daphne were made a big deal of in the previous four episodes, and now Velma didn't seem to care. It's a strange one, and the inconsistency is something that is very apparent. Now let's do episode 6. Episode 6 of the show was very much focused on relationships. We had Velma yearning for her dad to believe that her mother was actually taken so that her hallucinations would stop. We had Daphne getting to know her biological parents a bit more and then ultimately being saved by her adoptive parents. We had Norville and Gigi spending more and more time with each other, and we had Fred battling with his father over his new views. This was an episode that contained more information about the identity of the killer, contained clues that could be picked up on, and did actually see Velma lose her hallucinations, which I do think is a shame, because I thought the art style of those scenes were extremely strong, and I also feel as though there was definitely an avenue that wasn't explored when the hallucinations would happen. We only got brief glimpses of them. We found out about how the principal's mother used to work in the basement of the house that Fred's family moved into, and how that was why Velma's mother was there on the night that she went missing, because she wanted to know more about the Scooby project. We also saw that Brenda's vest was down with Daphne's parents, meaning that one of them could potentially be the killer. With the way that Daphne's biological mother was acting, it seems as though she could be. However, there was somebody that looked as though they attacked her in the closing moments of the episode, so it may not have been her. We also saw a clue that said Jinkies in the basement of Fred's house, which I thought was a bit far-fetched. Apparently it was written in Velma's mother's handwriting. I just find it hard to believe that she'd been living down there for years and never bumped into anybody at all. It was insinuated that the underground gang's location was on the other side of the basement, so there could be some kind of connection there, but I'm just not 100% sure on that. I feel the story has tried to be too clever in having all of these different arcs going on and it's getting itself a little bit lost. It should have primarily focused on the person that was removing brains and also Velma's missing mother, which would then ultimately allow us to find clues along the way, rather than having full-blown stories on the side providing clues, because these episodes are only 25 minutes long, so it doesn't have the runtime in order to do that successfully, or provide aha moments. At least, that's what I think anyway. This show, now past halfway, definitely feels as though it's beyond the point of saving. Which is a shame, because I never root for a show to fail. It would have been impressive to turn it around, but on this occasion, it just hasn't been able to. Nor do I think it will. Velma's mother is definitely going to have something to do with what's going on. It's obvious. I also find it funny that the extent of the creativity of this show extends to mothers. We have Velma's missing mother. Daphne was looking for her biological mother. Norville's mother was acting suspicious, and it was because her own mother was connected to the brain removal idea. Anyway, with four episodes to go, I'm deep enough in the show now to want to see what happens next and how the show will come to its conclusion. So, there you have it. How Velma Episode 5 and 6 introduced Scooby-Doo. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of episode 5 and 6? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. <laughs>